Hi, I'm Denise. This is Travels in My Chair. Welcome. A little bit of my backstory for those of you who are new to the channel. And thank you, by the way. I do appreciate that you've subscribed and are, are watching me today. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 1995. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in December of 2006. Had a mastectomy, left breast mastectomy to July 2007. Learned how to live with the MS, learned how to live with one boob, it wasn't a big deal, and the cancer didn't show its ugly face again, even though they told me, it's in your lymph nodes, you know it is in there somewhere, it may come back, and it didn't, it stayed away till 2021, and in 2021 I was following my doctor's orders, because we were having problems getting my metformin and my diabetes under control. And he said, you know, you're a sedentary lifestyle, you need to do some exercising. And because it was COVID and I wasn't getting out, I made up a combination of yoga, uh, Qigong, Tai Chi, cardio, and I put together a program that I would take me about three quarters of an hour to do every day. That seemed to be working. And I, I felt happy with that. And one day, all of a sudden, I had, I put a yoga strap on my leg to lift my leg up and I felt this interior popping sound and I went, in my head, I went, uh oh, this isn't right. I'm very tuned into my body and I've had to be because of the health issues over the years. You can't run with your head buried in the sand, you know. So I immediately phoned my doctor and I said, I would like to have a complete blood test done and I would like to have a CT scan of my midsection, my hips, because something's wrong. My doctor knows that I don't horse around with stuff, and he said, okay, let's get it happening. And sure enough, they showed tumors on my right pelvic area, my sacrum. Ugh, not again, but yes again, sure enough. So, uh, radiation, I was put on Letrosol, my old friend from years ago, and Ibrance. And at the same time, and I think this is important, at the same time I was put on a Zempic to try and get my diabetes under control. And that co combined with the medication played havoc on my body, but it was the Zempic that gave me the biggest headache as far as I couldn't eat and it was really kind of scary. So it's been 18 months about since I've been off the Ozempic. I haven't really gained any weight back. I mean, I fluctuate a little bit, but nothing I'm concerned about. I still can't eat a lot of food. And some of the people that have been tuning into my channel have been quite adamant about telling me that I should go on the carnivore diet. Now, I have to be honest, I'm very leery about diets. I've never seen a diet yet that works because in order for the diet to work, you have to be committed to that diet. And one of our problems, because we are having problems controlling our weight, because we're not committed to not eating food or can't. Anyway, you know, you got to give everything a chance. I, I mean, I remember the Aikens diet back in the 90s. And that was so, sort of similar to the carnivore diet. It was a high protein, no carbohydrates, no sugar, high fat. As once you eliminate sugar out of your diet, you know, it kind of takes care of itself in that way. The hard thing is eliminate the sugar out of your diet because everything in our life seems to be processed nowadays, which includes sugar. So if the carnivore diet is done properly, from what I've read, you eat a high quality fatty meat and you put can put salt on it for seasoning and you drink lots of water. Does that sound right to you? It just doesn't sound right to me. All my life I've been eat your vegetables, make sure you have an apple or an orange every day and all of a sudden we're being told just eat meat. So with carnivore diet you're not supposed to have any artificial flavorings, no sugars, no processed food, no fruit, no vegetables juices or anything like that. You're supposed to eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full. And one YouTube video I was watching said, if you're having trouble eating that meat, 
it's because you're not hungry. Well, this is where my problem comes. I don't really like red beef meat. I never have. My husband and his family love a good steak. My son loves a good steak. I could, no. I mean, I'll eat a minute amount, but I never have. Roast beef dinner, mm. I don't believe in all honesty that I'm a good candidate for the carnivore diet because I don't like meat. So if you're in your 70s like me, you probably had a pretty regimented growing up as far as food goes, okay? In our house, we had on Sundays, we had roast beef dinner, baked, uh, little baked potatoes or mashed potatoes, gravy, mashed carrot and turnip, frozen green peas or cabbage. And for dessert, we had rice pudding, and we used to fight over who was going to get the skim the brown off the top. The roast would go in the oven, and we'd go out for a family drive. Winter, summer, spring, mom would pick up, pack up the picnic case and with sandwiches and a, a flask of tea, as she'd call it, and we'd go for a picnic. And that was my Sundays as for as many years as I can remember until I was a teenager and did my own thing. Then on Monday, it was leftover roast beef made into some kind of a goulash or something. Tuesday was always liver. Worst day of the week for me because I had to get the liver ready so that when my dad got home from work, and this, by this time I'm, you know, in like 11, 12 years old, when, I, when my dad got home from work, the liver was ready. It had been soaked all day in water. And... Then it was dried out and padded and blah, blah. Hate liver to this day. Uh, Wednesday might have been chicken. Thursday was always fried eggs and homemade french fries because meat was expensive. And when we were growing up, leave everything else, but you must eat your meat because that was expensive. Friday, we had fish sticks. Now, we were, I was raised in Calgary on the, and the fish just wasn't something that we ever had sorry so fish sticks was considered our fish meal <laughs> I can't remember what we ate on Saturday but you get the picture it was very regimented once a month we went out to the local Chinese Jade Palace restaurant and my brother and I were allowed to order Shirley Temples and Roy Rogers to drink that was a big treat and on payday or something but you never questioned what was put in front of you to eat School lunches were always either a ham or a bologna or a cheese sandwich, a piece of fruit. After school, I don't remember having snacks, but we must have of some kind. But it was a pretty regimented course of food. We didn't experiment a lot. I mean, you know, dad would make steak and kidney pies and stuff like that. But Always meat was at the center of it because as he was growing up, meat was expensive even then. My parents did not overfeed us. They realized I was a skinny mini and so they gave me a small amount of food, but I was expected to eat it. Didn't like liver? Tough. It's expensive. You eat it. And we did. And that was me growing up. So food to me was never a big deal. I could take it or leave it. And it wasn't until, and you can just imagine my mother going to work, one of the very few women in the neighborhood that worked. She'd come home, she'd get home at 5.30, and they had invented Hamburger Helper and Lipton's Beef Stroganoff. My mother went crazy. This was a new era for her. It was truly a special time in her life. And I don't blame her. And But that was the start of us eating bigger amounts and more prepared food because it made these housewives who were now having to go out to work made their life easier because they were still the prone to be the biggest keeper of the house even though they were also working a full-time or part-time job. We didn't have the opportunity of shipping meat from and vegetables and fruit from all around the world. I remember we used to send a wooden box of Okanagan apples to our relatives in England or mom would find a way of shipping mandarin oranges at Christmas time. It was like a huge treat. So we ate what was seasonal. So in the winter we ate parsnip, turnip, carrots, potatoes and every day dad would go, Dita, go get a cup of 
carrots and three or four potatoes out of the cold room. That was just life, you know. We didn't experiment with food. It was a balanced diet. We were generally healthy. That was it. You know, I think we're chemical to death. Over the years, the size of our dinner plates have gotten way bigger. The size of our coffee cups, mugs are way bigger. The size of our takeout coffees, bigger. We can have food shipped from anywhere in the world, any time of the year, and we're gluttons. Honestly, we're gluttons, and food is artificially sweetened, and the sugar industry is just having a heyday, and we are just sucking it all up. Guys, I wish I could say it's our fault, but you know what? It isn't our fault. We've been programmed, and it so it happened over a slow period of time so that we're not even aware of that it's happening, but it's happening. We're eating way more food than we ever did. We're not eating healthy. Our portions are out of control. And it's all right to say, hey, you need to have self-control. You need to be able to put your finger on this and stop eating so much. You can do it. Well, they also tell you you can quit smoking. That's almost akin to quitting heroin, I hear. It took me a long time to quit smoking. So the reason I'm saying all this is I can sit here and tell you guys, not from a medical point of view for sure, because I'm not a doctor, never have been, never will be, but I can tell you guys, go ahead and try the carnivore diet. I mean, there's tons of stuff on YouTube that give you all the reasons why you should. We've been raised our life to follow in Canada, the Canada Food Guide, and it's changed. I have to admit, over the years, it's changed. But still, to give you a healthy balance of dairy, you know, milk, cheese, vegetables, fruit, carbohydrates, because you do need them. And if you follow that, and of course the portion size, which is a big deal, and eat more frequently, like every three to four hours, you'll keep a healthy weight. And they will say, you just have to have the willpower you just have to have the willpower to do it. Ah, oh, willpower. Good God, if we had the willpower, there wouldn't be smokers, there wouldn't be alcoholics, there wouldn't be drug addicts. There wouldn't be obese people in the world. Thank you, guys. You put too much pressure. We put too much pressure on ourselves to be perfect, to be the perfect weight, to, be, to eat perfectly. And then that perfect changes. What was perfect 30 years ago isn't perfect now. And it's up to us to recognize what's going to give us a healthy body. What's the difference? You've got vegetarians, vegans, carnivore, uh, I don't know. I mean, where does it end? How about just eat balanced, eat smaller amounts and be healthy? How about that? Wouldn't that work? And take care of yourself. You are the most important person in the world. You probably are the reason your family circulates the way it does. You're needed, and you need to be healthy. And as healthy as you can be, you know, because we're all going to get stuff. We're all going to die of something, and we're all going to die. It's just how you live that life before you die. That's the important thing. So, if you want to go on the carnivore diet, and your doctor doesn't laugh you out of his office, and you know, me telling you don't isn't going to make you not. So do whatever you feel is best, guys. It's, you know, for me, if I loved meat and we could sit down with a big slab of steak, dripping blood everywhere, hey, I would do it in a heartbeat for probably a week. I honestly don't think I'll ever have the willpower, so to speak, to eat a high fatty meat diet. It's not going to be me. I have to be eat a more balanced diet. That's the hardest thing is cutting the sugar out, really. Thanks again for joining me. Send my love to each and every one of you. Thank you for viewing. Thank you for subscribing. You're very important. You are very important. See you next time. Bye for now.